Hey there, welcome to Neuropod, a channel covering all topics related to Elon Musk's brain chip implant company, Neuralink. My name is Ryan Tanaka, and in this update episode, I'm going to tell you about the first three people who have gotten a Neuralink implant. I'll share some clips from Elon, and then I'll discuss the next steps for Neuralink to help Noland and others control a robotic arm with just their implant. Then we'll go over comments from Neuralink president DJ Su, followed by academic work in the field of neuroscience and decoding. I'll clear up some bad reporting from Reuters, and then look ahead to Neuralink's international expansion which is actually not looking very far ahead given they've already announced human trials are open in Canada. And we'll finish it up with highlights of Elon talking with the Congress of Neurosurgeons. Okay, so as you may have heard, Elon recently broke the news that Neuralink has implanted in a third person. We've got uh, Neuralink, we've got now three patients with, three, three humans with Neuralinks implanted and they're working well. Um, and we've upgraded devices. That, that that where the devices will have more um, more electrodes, basically higher higher bandwidth, um, longer battery life, and everything. And um, so we, we expect to, you know, hopefully do I don't know, twenty or thirty um, patients next year or this year, I should say, um, with the upgraded Neuralink devices. Recall that the first two participants, Nolan and Alex, are paralyzed and therefore benefit greatly from their implants. The implant gives each of them digital freedom, where they can play music, they can watch videos, post on X, and even play complex video games like Civilization VI. Think about how game-changing it'd be to go from having almost no use of a computer or the internet to having it the next day. That would be one of the greatest gifts you could get. Neuralink is also working on helping those with ALS, blindness, hearing loss, and other neurological conditions. And one thing I hope to do with Neuropod is help people recognize how folks with these disabilities live day to day. For example, any of us could become paralyzed. If you have no physical disability and you simply have some bad fortune, sustaining a spinal cord injury wouldn't only alter your life, but also your closest family and friends as well. In the case of ALS, although it's a rare condition, there are still more than 300,000 people living with this horrible disease that degenerates motor neurons. Remember in the summer of 2014 when the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge gained popularity? This was for a good cause, but many still don't realize life with ALS leads to a gradual loss of physical abilities, where moving, talking, eating, and even breathing become increasingly challenging. Blindness and hearing loss are more easily understood, so I'll just say this. When it comes to these neurological problems, there are some truly horrible life circumstances that people live through, and Neuralink is working on helping resolve many of these. How can anyone not support the work they're doing? Next up is this feasibility study. Just a couple months ago, Neuralink stated, We're excited to announce the approval and launch of a new feasibility trial to extend BCI control using the N1 implant to an investigational assistive robotic arm. This is an important first step towards restoring not only digital freedom, but also physical freedom. More info to come, but the Convoy study will enable cross-enrolling participants from the ongoing PRIME study. The statement at the end about cross-enrolling participants is an excellent sign for Nolan Arba, the first human with a Neuralink implant, as he will likely be among the first to participate in this Convoy study. And this post from even further back shows that in the longer term, not only will Nolan go from digital freedom to some physical freedom, but he'll eventually have much greater physical freedom. Elon Musk posted this on X. Long term, I think we can bridge severed nerve signals to a second Neuralink in the spine, restoring full body control. And keep in mind that Nolan has already discussed with Elon that a second implant would be okay. Back in June, this is what Elon posted. Nolan and I discussed a possible second Neuralink, next-gen version, that would allow his other brain hemisphere to interact telepathically with his computer. This would be like having two-handed control ability, the equivalent of mouse and keyboard. Now, regarding this announcement of the new study, the president of Neuralink, DJ Su, had this to say. Our goal is to help restore as much autonomy and agency as possible to those who have lost them due to debilitating conditions like spinal cord injury or ALS. 
Very excited to see our work extend beyond providing digital freedom to physical freedom, physical manipulation of surrounding objects, which is not only cool, but also can assist with activities of daily living, such as self-feeding. So far, high-performance, accurate, and reliable cursor joystick control seems to translate well to effective robotic arm control, so feeling optimistic about the acceleration here. Starting with off-the-shelf arm and gripper, Maybe eventually the entire Optimus, not just the arm. The part that I like the most about these posts is that Neuralink is now making progress on helping provide a new and different level of freedom to these paralyzed individuals. As it is, I predict so many don't recognize the importance and value of controlling a computer with just your mind. If you're paralyzed and don't have full control of a computer, you have so little mobility in your life. And by simply having great control of your digital devices, you unlock an entirely new digital world. And you can literally play in that world all day and night. Like I said before, just imagine going from not being able to play advanced video games or have the ability to browse the internet, stream music, watch YouTube, and then you get a Neuralink implant and now you can do all those things. Bye bye free time. For Nolan, Alex, and others, the next step will be physically regaining some mobility and not having to rely on others to do tasks that oh so many of us take for granted. Next, we have some work from UC Davis professor Sergei Stavisky and his lab. His student Tyler and others found they could implant in speech motor cortex and get enough information to control a mouse cursor. DJ congratulated Sergei and the team on X, and another Neuralink team lead, Bliss, writes, important work that may one day allow decoding speech and cursor control from a single implant. For the intelligent folks watching, this may sound odd to have to say this, but this demonstrates that Neuralink is attuned to developments in academia and the rest of the industry. They don't operate in a complete bubble. And although the Neuralink team is the ones that are pioneering the new developments in the industry, it's not like they have no communication with those in academia. And I should add that it feels like folks in academia are increasingly respecting the great work Neuralink has done to turn this advanced tech into a real product that people can use at scale. Now, on a less bright and cheery note, I thought I'd talk about this bad reporting from Rachel Levy. She wrote this article titled, US FDA cited animal lab at Musk's Neuralink for objectionable conditions. These hit pieces are misleading and just more examples of how so-called journalists can actually be activists in disguise. Rachel Levy has a history of publishing negative news articles about Neuralink that have either skewed the truth or missed the accuracy mark entirely. In this case, her article fails to mention many facts and totally misses how caring Neuralink's team is. Watch this clip from my video back in 2000. 22, where we hear from members of Neuralink's animal care team. We want to be more kind. We want to be more humane. People coming into the field now are really pushing that. I'm one of the people who makes the devices using my hands. I'm constantly thinking that this is going to go into Barbara, or this is going to go into Cleo, and we know their names. We've seen them. Our animal behavior team is fantastic. My job so much better because I can rely on their expertise. One of my jobs is to help design behavioral plans and training plans for the animals that we use in behavioral research. Make sure that the spaces that they're in are comfortable and designed in such a way to express that full behavioral repertoire. Neuralink is not some arbitrary faceless entity that makes decisions in a bubble. Instead, the company is a group of people. There are around 250 people who are motivated by the mission to help people with neurological diseases. Many of them probably have animals as pets, or would like to spend more time with animals. Assuming they'd collectively want to harm or are indifferent to harming animals doesn't add up. This is more discussion from another Neuralink animal care team member, Sam. Oversee all facets of the animal care program, from the day-to-day -day husbandry, food, water, provisions for these animals, to ensure that these animals are always looked after to the best of our ability. So we actually have a committee here that we've developed that meets regularly, talks about ways that we can try to prevent compassion fatigue so that every day when we come in, we have the energy that we need to provide good, loving compassion to the animals that we work with. Like with practically everything at Tesla and SpaceX, Neuralink appears to lead across the board. This is no different when it comes to animal care and safety. And like I mentioned earlier, team members are often personally motivated by Neuralink's compassionate initial mission of helping people with neurological diseases. 
I got into this field probably as an inspiration for my sister, who is on the autism spectrum. It made me look at all life forms that were struggling and challenged to have their own voice heard. And so I wanted to be in a position where I could bridge that opportunity to communicate with the world. I really feel that Neuralink supports animal welfare and allows us to have a voice for them. I feel really proud that I get to be part of making their lives and that contribution better. Next, we have potentially the most important news of this episode. In November, Neuralink posted this. We're happy to announce that Health Canada has approved the launch of our first clinical trial in Canada. Recruitment is now open. If you have quadriplegia due to ALS or spinal cord injury, you may qualify. Visit our patient registry to learn more and apply. And the chosen site, Canada's number one hospital, University Health Network, posted this. As the Canadian site for the Canada Prime Study, University Health Network is proud to be the first hospital in the country to evaluate this pioneering neurosurgical procedure involving the Neuralink implantable device. And Elon took it even further where he mentioned in a gaming stream that they're looking to expand in many countries like the UK, Canada, UAE, and New Zealand. Uh, yeah, your Neuralink, uh, we're planning to have trials uh, in the UK this year for some Neuralink, so there'll be hopefully some um, Neuralink uh, patients in the UK, maybe Canada, um, and maybe uh, UAE uh, as well, and uh, obviously in the US, um, New Zealand. We're looking at actually several countries uh, aiming to do, do Neuralink uh, implants in several countries this year. If you or anyone you know could benefit from this, apply to the patient registry at neuralink.com slash patient dash registry. Also, check out this note from Romina. She says, I'm currently personally reviewing every single patient registry application that we've received under the quadriplegia indication. If you're interested in speaking to me about your potential eligibility for our current studies, let me know and I'll schedule a call with you. Elon spoke at a conference with the Congress of Neurosurgeons and discussed some questions that often come up when I first talk to people who aren't very aware of the details of Neuralink. Like, how much will the surgery cost? What is the procedure like? How long will the procedure take? The device itself, uh, in volume, should, should not be super expensive. I mean, hopefully it's like, I don't know, five to $10,000. And, 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 and very high volume, it should start to approximate the cost of, uh, of an Apple Watch or a, a phone. So maybe it's a, a thousand or two thousand dollars, something like that. He added this about how long the surgery will take, which is going to be necessary as he and the Neuralink team wants to make this as accessible as possible to anyone who wants a Neuralink implant. Um, and so at that point, if it's, if it's being done by a robot and, and it's, the whole thing takes 10 minutes, um, I, I, th I think it probably the, the whole thing, all inclusive, ends up being you know, on the order of $5,000, maybe some similar to LASIK. And then this fun question. Can you settle the age old question? What, what's actually more difficult, brain surgery or rocket science? Well, they're both, they're both quite challenging. It's bizarre that I'm involved in both. Um, uh, so, um, I mean, I think they're, they're, they're of, of similar magnitude of difficulty, um, especially- so the, story, when, so the story checks out. <laughs> yes. I think I think nobody's out there thinking, you know, what's easy? Brain surgery and rockets. Okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks for backing us up. We appreciate it. Yeah, one hundred percent. No, that's uh, legit. Um, brain surgery is super hard, and rockets are super hard. And there's a reason that they are idiomatic expressions. This is no accident. If you want more content about Neuralink, follow us on X and YouTube at Neuropod. In addition to you watching, the best ways to support are by following reposting and bookmarking the episode on X. So thanks to all of you who do that. Hope to catch you next time.